Hey there. So we are talking about chakra alignment again today. This is a very, very critical piece of the manifestation process. Because again, if your chakras or your energy centers are not in alignment, the energy from up here in the ethos is not going to flow as easily and it's not going to flow as well. And you will not be able to bring it all together and manifest it with as much ease as one who is in alignment. So what are we talking about in part two of this portion of the series? We are talking about root chakra alignment. Now, in part one, I had you write down like all the different feelings and whatnot maybe that you're having. And, and so we can begin to identify what areas are, what's going on in which of the chakras. So I want to talk about your root chakra. This is the area of worthiness. This is the area of stability. This is the grounding area. This is where it really all kind of starts and it all finishes. It really does come full circle. So if you are having some physical symptoms, this could be part of what's going on, right? Some physical symptoms are issues with your legs, feet, lower back, and immune system can all be a signal that we're out of alignment in the chakra area, okay? Um, also emotionally, insecurity, low self-esteem, fear, anxiety, lack of trust. If you're constantly worried about finances, job security, basic needs, if you do some of the self-sabotaging, right, where things are going great and all of a sudden it just seems to blow up, that's probably a good space to say, mm, I might be having some issues with my, my root chakra. And behaviorally, um, if it feels like you're kind of obsessed with accumulating possessions or you're really materialistic, and that can actually also be a behavior or an emotional like energy of lack. So some, this can show up in an odd kind of way. If you're operating it with an energy of lack, that can end up stopping you, right, from actually moving in abundance because you're always so worried about not having enough, okay? If you're not able to really, or that's that scarcity mindset, right? If you're not able to really um, enjoy the present moment because you're always worried about tomorrow or you're like beating yourself up for from the past, I want you to consider that perhaps that is also showing where we're out of alignment in our root chakra. Now, what I want you to also understand is because we hold on to trauma, like energetically, so we hold on to mental trauma, emotional trauma, we hold on to all these different types of trauma consistently. And as we do that, um, a lot of times, especially when it's in our childhood and our early teen years, especially, that's building this foundation of distrust in certain things, building a scarcity mindset, building a lack of self-esteem, building a lack of feeling of, of building a greater feeling of instability, then that kind of resides in the root chakra. It also makes it much more difficult to move through the healing process if we're not clearly identifying where this is. So when I talk about getting to the root of the problem, we always talk about that, right? You talk about that too, too I'm sure. The root of the problem is we got to get down to the basics. Where did this come from? Okay. Where did it come from? Where did it start? And a lot of times we're going to find that it is the root chakra that is holding on to a lot of of traumas. Okay. The root chakra also enables us to have a very strong um, connection to the earth, helps us being grounded. Um, and so that's why when you're going to see things like feet, legs, lower back, right? That's our foundation. Okay. So now that's not to say that if you have some disability in those areas that, that you can't have a healed root chakra, we're talking energetically, Okay, sometimes how I can show up physically, but I don't want you to think that that I'm saying that at all. I'm just saying representatively, it keeps us grounded to the earth. Now, how can we begin to heal and bring that into balance? So inner child work, <laughs> shadow work. Then when I say inner child work, going back to your childhood years, okay, 
and early teens, I would say up to 13, 14. That is going to be very much key. So when we are talking about shadow work, um, there's different forms, there's different levels, there's different types. But one of the keys to starting on this process and manifesting your best life is going to be doing that inner child work. Okay. So you can, I'm sure you can find some, some various on this channel and other channels, um, on this platform and other platforms, you're going to find some information about inner child work, but just know that's really without assigning blame, without assigning shame or anything like that. It is literally going back to the parental and perhaps the grandparents, anyone that had a very big and significant, um, you know, say and sway over you as you were coming up um, through your childhood, it's going back there and healing those things. It's going back there and understanding that your p- parent or parental figure, they were dealing probably with a lot of their own stuff, right? And so they had some unhealed stuff they're passing on to you. So it's going back to that place and seeing where these feelings of instability of that. I can't, you know, trust things about, I can't trust people, um, scarcity, all of these different things where that actually arose from. And then not only forgiving the other person, but forgiving yourself. Um, a lot of times still as adults, we're carrying guilt and shame and some level of responsibility for things that were completely outside of our responsibility um, and out of our purview. And so we're not meant to carry that on. We're meant to break a cycle, right? We're meant to heal that and then move forward and transmute it and reintegrate it as power, not hold on to it. Um, Different yoga poses can be very good with this. Um, Breath work can help you most definitely. Affirmations that strengthen the root chakra, like I am safe and secure. Uh, I am grounded in the present moment. I trust the process of life. I trust myself, right? Um, I trust others. I, 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 I love myself. I discern the reality of things. I am abundant, you know, like that sort of thing that definitely helps when you're meditating. I want you to be sure that you're listening to a frequency. If you use music in the background, that is specifically for root chakra healing as well. And as always, right, if you work with an experienced Reiki or other type of energy healer, we can definitely help you through those processes. By the way, if any of this is beginning to resonate with you, don't forget to leave me a comment down below. We do read all and every comment. And if you have any questions, leave that down below, okay, as well. And don't forget to give me a follow, a like, and a subscribe, whatever platform we're on, and share this with some folks that you think it may help. Um, Some of the other grounding techniques can be just as simple as going outside for a walk, finding yourself a park, put, sit down and put your feet in the grass, right? Um, Spending time in nature, especially woods or forests or that type of thing, trails, that really does help with the grounding. Doing physical exercise, getting into your body and allowing your body to release this energy through physical exercise helps as well. Um, Root chakra, uh, so like root vegetables, consuming those like carrots, potatoes, beets, um, uh, legumes, um, you know, lean meats if you're a meat eater, that gives you like definitely the groundedness and stability. So you're putting that energy back in your body. Mindfulness meditation, of course, helps being in the present moment. And then the seed mantra for your root chakra is LAM, okay? LAM. All right. Now I hope this has begun to help you. We're working on that root chakra. And then the next video, we're going to take a step up and work on that sacral chakra. Until next time, never forget, give permission to your purpose to provide for your person. See you soon. Bye.